Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will meet his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in St. Petersburg next month. The main aim of these talks is to restore trade and economic ties between Russia and Turkey. In recent years, Turkey's been good at making enemies. But that appears to be changing. Moscow, the latest neighbor to be invited to a return to cordial relations. We will increase the number of friends we have and reduce the number of enemies. Our efforts in this regard will continue at a steady pace. And not only with Russia or Egypt, we also want to improve ties with all Black Sea and Mediterranean countries. As soon as possible and at an accelerated pace. That's what Turkey says about normalizing relations with Russia. Turkey's Deputy Prime Minister Mehmet Simsek made the announcement after meeting his Russian counterpart Arkady Dvorkovich in Moscow. Burlington area residents say the Suris River is turning red. Good evening, I'm Katie Perkins. And I'm Joe Skoshevsky. Thanks for joining us. It sounds like something you'd find in the Bible, a river turning red, but as it turns out, there is an explanation for what's happening. State health officials say they believe they know what's making the river look this way. And they say Burlington area resident John Dawson got quite a surprise this past week. As I've been working on fence up here, I've seen it up around the bend over there as well. While working on his property near the Suris River, Dawson noticed a red tint on the water and the color started to grow. That's when he took some pictures and sent them to the North Dakota Department of Health. It almost looks like it's oil floating on top of the water, not what you'd normally think of with algae. In addition, it's changed colors actually. It's been green, it's been red, it's mostly red. In Brevard County, unfortunately, we have to report more dead fish have been spotted in the Banana River. Daryl Nail got the tip late this afternoon. Daryl, what can you tell us about what's happening this time? Ed, thanks for allowing us to come on your boat and show us what's going on. Uh, what did you see in terms of, uh, can you quantify how many dead fish? Yeah, Daryl, thanks for putting a spotlight on this. First of all, you know, this is uh, something that's very important to me as a commissioner here. But as we turned here and made the right uh, and went south, we started seeing little little specks here and there and then uh, all of a sudden we thought were bubbles and then it turned out to just be thousands and thousands of fish um, and as you can see it's just it, when I started the video by, towards the end of it I was just devastated I really had no no words for for what I witnessed here and this is the same area this was ground zero for the massive fish kill that was back in March how does it make you feel to see this happening again well this is devastating I'm in awe when we look at this stuff Begins with hundreds of dead fish washing up on the shores of Lake Thurman. Early this morning, state agents launching an investigation to find out what caused that fish kill. This is the worst I've seen. Larry Spivey has lived on the lake for more than 16 years, and this is the first time he's seen something like this happen just feet away from his back door. But this weekend, something was different. I come out to test my boat. I've been working on it, and 
I noticed there was fish just floating everywhere. And not just one or two, but hundreds of fish. McCormick says he's never seen anything like it. I've never seen fish kill out here. I mean, it's got a pretty good flow through, and even in the years before when the lake was really low, you think that that's when they would have it, you know, but it wasn't. It was, the lake's full right now. Hundreds of dead fish wash up along the banks of the Auglades River. This is NBC 24 News at 6. Good evening. I'm Laura Emerson. Tonight's big story, the investigation into what is causing the fish kill in Putnam County. Lots of people are creeped out by the idea of scientists making human-animal hybrids in the lab, but the government's ban on funding the research turned out to be short-lived. The National Institutes of Health plans to start funding hybrid research in early 2017, around a year and a half after saying scientists needed to slow down and consider the implications. So when it comes to mixing human and animal DNA, that genie is long out of the bottle. What the government has been stalling over is a step further, putting not just human DNA, but human stem cells sales into animals. Well, what BGI can offer is something I could only dream about, and that is having whole genome sequencing done on these 2,000 extremely bright individuals. So by whole genome sequencing, I mean sequencing all 3 billion base pairs of DNA for each of these 2,000 individuals. Oh, where intelligence is in the genes? Well, um, People ask questions like, you know, why do you want to do this sort of research? And I think in honesty, any scientist would say, because I'm interested in understanding it. I want to understand why some kids learn better than others, why some children have trouble in school, trouble learning. But in terms of society, you know, and what good is it? Well, there's some bad that people worry about, like designer babies, you know, parents might select babies based on genes. I would say, well, we ought to talk about it. You know, maybe it isn't totally a bad thing to do. We have initiated to sequence 5,000 twins. We are going to sequence 1 million Chinese in order to know more about their genomes. I don't know how many years it would take, and then we expect that the gene will tell us the answers. I have a dream that we are going to sequence every living thing on earth. We are going to sequence everybody in the world. And the genomics, no doubt, is an opportunity for us all. In theory, of course, you, you should be able to clone humans because humans are not different from other mammals in that respect. And our society is not ready to accept artificially cloned people. Remember the first time I see these uh, embryos under my microscope, and then after four months, and these embryos they are beca becoming the pigs. And I'm just thinking, oh, these pigs, they are used to be the embryos under my microscope, and I made these embryos. I was so excited about that. Why? Oh, it is really like being a mom. 
<laughs> yes, uh, this, this is the uh, um, this, this is a uh, uh, life that I created. It is um, by my hand. best humans have not been produced yet. The smartest humans or the longest lived humans, the more we know about the coding, the more we can optimize and move toward the direction that we want to move in. If you want to produce smart humans or nice humans, um, honorable humans, caring humans, whatever it is, those are traits that are related to certain presence or absence of certain genes and will have much finer control over the types of people that are born in the future uh, through this. But it's an essentially mathematical description of there's a trait that you're interested in, you want to push it in one direction or the other, which switches do you turn on and off in order to do that? We do it with cows. We have super cows and super chickens. We have animals that mature ten time, well, several times faster than the wild versions. So we've pushed those animals in directions we want to push them, but we haven't really pushed ourselves. And I think people will push themselves.